Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're too kind. Oh my god, you guys. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you. You're too kind. You're too kind. Thank you, please. Oh my god, you guys, thank you. No, you. No, no, you. No, 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 you. You. Oh, thank you. Alright? Okay, good. Well, what a pleasure it is once again to have your beautiful faces grace my channel once more. As you can see here, we have the ultimate Giga Chad of Dark Souls here today. The shunned offspring of Gwyn himself, the Nameless King. This is a truly awesome STL designed by the super talented guys at Zed Kino, the same guys who did the dancer model that I printed and painted a couple of weeks back. I've left a link in the description for this file if you want to go print your own. So check out this little close up of him, they've nailed all the little intricate details on him, the hair, the armour, the jewels, the pose as if the wind was catching him mid stance, it's an all round awesome looking model and I can't wait to start bringing it to life. This here is how the finished product will look by the end of the video. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the painting. And engage in jolly cooperation. So first off, I'm just gonna pick out all the paints that I'm gonna be needing for this model. And just fub them off to one side. I'm not going to do any zenithal highlighting today for this model, I'm just going to get stuck right in, so time to whip out the wet palette. We'll be starting off by painting the leather straps on his armour, so I'll be loading some Rhinox hide onto the palette, then followed by some lighter Mournfang brown. For the highlights I'll be using some even lighter tones, so Zandru dust will be added on, and also for the brightest points I'll be chucking on some Wraith bone. Then I'll be applying a base layer of the Rhinox hide to the cloth leather looking parts of this dude's armour and these will be the little bits around his neck, the floating bits sticking out of the back and the little parts wrapped around his shoulders and the wraps on his feet. This is probably one of the coolest if not the coolest boss in the game, maybe even across all the games. Everyone seems to love this dude, the misty and cloudy area. The phase one part of the fight where he's riding the drake, the lightning, the character design, the phase two solo fight, and especially all the lore that surrounds him and all the subsequent theories that follow it. He really is one of the most badass bosses that Souls has to offer, up there with Gale in the upper echelon of Dark Souls bosses for sure. So on top of the Rhinox hide I'm then adding in these little strokes of Mournfang brown to highlight different areas of the brown and just trying to keep it non-uniform and basically building up lots of different strokes to add some definition. And you'll see as I go I'll be building up more strokes using Xandru dust and then finally Wraithbone to add layers of lighter and lighter shades as different strokes to these same parts of the model. Now this dude was supposedly the firstborn of Gwyn, and at some point as he fought alongside his father and led the dragon slayers in the war against the dragons, he sacrificed everything to ally himself with the ancient dragons, for which he was punished by being exiled and having all of his titles and deity status stripped, thus becoming the Nameless King. An interesting thing to note is that there is actually a missing statue next to Gwyn in Anolondo. That was once a statue of him, which was removed. I mean that's only scratching the surface of this dude and at this point it's time to paint his luscious flowing locks. Now this guy's hair has definitely seen better days as it's now got all grey and lifeless. Probably the stress of you know being stripped of your godliness were to Kratos. Mind your tongue boy! So I'll be starting off with some Ishin grey as the base coat of the hair, then with some Celestra grey I'll be finally painting on different strands to give him some of that good highlighting definition. Then repeating the same method moving up through the lighter tones to administratum grey and then finally some corex white, just building up lighter tones the further we move up through the hair and onto different strands to create a nice sort of different variation. Also before I forget to mention it, a couple of you asked if I could try and maybe focus in more on some close ups so you can see more about the methods that I talk about as I do them. So I finally managed to make enough room around my table here to be able to get this nice over the shoulder view. Works better, right? 
I think you can see more and I think it works a bit better than the previous angle. Sound off in the comments if you think this is a better setup view for you guys to sort of to see clearer what I'm talking about. If so, I'll definitely stick to this setup from now on. You can see I'm using one of my finer sable brushes for this as they are great for holding paint and keeping their shape for finer detailing. This is the Artificer Layer brush from Games Workshop, which is a very nice precision brush. I did have some really nice Winsor & Newtons, but I didn't take great care of them because I wasn't fully clued in on brush care. So I need to see if I can be able to restore them so I can start using them again. But in the meantime, this is a decent enough brush for this kind of paint job. Same again as before with the lighter grey tone, I'm just picking smaller areas and strokes to detail in some extra highlights for him. Higher up in the hair and away from the roots and picking out different strands for variation. Then lastly, giving some of the final highlight with some white to the outmost areas. Hair is kind of a weird one because on the most part, hair is kind of one color or one tone. So it's hard to kind of tell where to add variation and if you're making it look too unrealistic or maybe too one note. But after watching a lot of videos specifically on painting hair, this is the route I've found myself being most comfortable with taking it on. Next up with some Dark Reaper and some Cantor Blue, I'm just going to mix between these two blues on the wet palette to build up the main colour of the cloak part of his armour. From the majority of the reference pictures I have of this guy, it seems like this main part of his armour is blue. I mean, if it's not the most exact replica, you know, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's also just nice to have a main vibrant colour for the eye to focus on to break it up a bit. I mean, fuck it, if you want to make him red, who cares? Like, you could give him a rainbow head if you really wanted. He could be the Rainbow King, you know, go nuts. The next bit is a nice, simple part. It's the actual metallic part of the armor. So the main body of it, I'll be dry brushing it with some Retributor armor and highlighting with some Ulrich gold. I'm telling you all this now in advance so I can waffle on a bit about how awesome this dude is. Buckle up. His attacks are reminiscent of Ornstein as he uses a spear imbued with lightning, the very thing that dragons are vulnerable to, and he uses lightning miracles, very reminiscent of Gwyn himself. We know that Gwyn's firstborn was a god of war who trained Ornstein to be his first knight, who then goes on to become the leader of Gwyn's knights. This itself suggests that the firstborn was the leader of the knights of Gwyn, before something changed, you know, being exiled for one. This coupled with the fact that the info on the nameless Hunk's Bruh. crown states that it closely resembles the crown of the First Lord, First Lord being Gwyn. From that, it's fair enough to deduce that the nameless Beefcake is the direct descendant of Gwyn himself. Circling back to Ornstein for a moment, you find his remains in Arsdragon's Peak, which suggests that he left the cathedral in search of the nameless stud, where he eventually met his end. Whether he traveled there to rejoin his former trainer or to kill him after his exile, I'm unsure, but it's also said that the Ornstein you fought with Smau in Anor Londo was actually just an illusion created by Gwendolyn, and that the real Ornstein was on his way to try and find Archdragon's Peak. Pretty fucking cool stuff, eh? Now the next part is this little Under Armour part, which I'll be dry brushing on some lead belcher as it looks kind of chain maily. It's really kind of hard to tell to be honest, but this looks good for now. Since I've still got the dry brush equipped, I decided to dry brush on some highlights using some white mixed into the previous blues to just brush on some lighter tones to the parts of his trousers, the cloak bits and his arms as well, just to make it look a little bit more interesting around those areas. Look at him, what a dream boat. His crown deserves some shine as well, so it'll be painted with some Alric gold rather than just using some Retributor armor, which is a bit duller. Oh, and here comes a surprise dog delivery with an added kiss. How wonderful, little love buff for me there. Now to highlight the lead belcher that we applied earlier, I'm just gonna dry brush on some iron breaker lightly all over it. Then these little kind of feather parts sticking out from the edge of his sleeves, I'm just gonna paint with some bone colored stuff. More cast bone will do the job as it's a good solid base color, but you can use any similar color if you wanted. And to that, I'll just dry brush on some darker browns to the part that joins just under the little leather strap here. 
Show us the feet. feet. I hear you all scream. Well, his skin seems darkened and charred to me, so I'll be tickling his little dogs with some Eshin Grey mixed with some black to start and applying it to the rest of his exposed skin, so the hands, the arms, and the little face that you can see tucked away behind his little snoot here. Adorable. Then, same as before, we're just dry brushing on some lighter tones of grey, gently onto the hands and the feet, just to target the outermost regions to generate some highlighting. Then for some variation and mixing up a little bit, I'm just going to gently dry brush on some brown tones around the areas that I didn't highlight, just to break it up a bit. Dry brushing will give some good texture to the skin as well and make it look as if it was a little bit weathered rather than just smooth. And now just to top it off, we're going to give him a nice little manicure and a little pedicure. I know you guys love that shit. So just with the same bone color as before, I'm just going to paint his cute little nails, making him all pretty for his nice big date tonight. Stay tuned for a Nameless King makeup tutorial. Even the buffest dudes deserve a makeover every now and then. Now for his spear, I wanted to try and make it look a bit like it's being lit up with lightning. So for a simple base, I'm just going to dry brush on some gold and not worry too much about the detailing for now. Just a nice wide application to both sides of the spearhead with some gold and on the handle parts of the spear. Not worrying too much about going into great detail with it as we'll be airbrushing it all later. Also just adding some grey metallics to the handle to spice it up a bit. Why not? just using some of the brighter Ulrich Gold to add a bit of dry brushed highlight to certain areas as well. Then I'm just adding a layer of yellow. For me, this is Avalon Sunset, just to up the saturation of the color a tad. Not hugely necessary to be honest, because I'll be spraying over it, but you know what? So with the airbrush ready and equipped, I'm loading up some titanium white ink. And with this, I'm just spraying on a little light amount, focusing more of the brighter parts on the outer parts of the spear and fading away as we come towards the center of the spearhead for now. Once done, the first color I'll be applying is some of this bright orange ink as it's a nice vivid base that we can build upon. Just focusing on some small areas, mainly towards the base of the spearhead and by his hands, and also give some of this orange spray to his clothes and to his hand, just to generate some of this light reflection. Then onto the yellow, which will be the main coat of color. And with this just fading up from the orange and building towards the tip of the spear, leaving a little bit of white towards the tip, which we can build up some even brighter tones to. Also, don't forget to add some of the yellow to the reflections on his hand and his clothes too, just to go with the orange. Now for the actual lightning, I pulled up some reference images of lightning strikes on my phone and then started to finally paint in some little lightning-like lines, say that fast three times, onto the spear with my precision brush and some Corax white. Just keeping them nice and non-uniform so it looks sort of varied enough. Lightning doesn't strike twice, my friends, so just applying this to both sides of the spear and then copying the exact same thing onto the other side of it as well. With that step complete, I'm then just doing a very gentle spray of a thin layer of white ink over the top of these lines just to add a bit of a faded halo effect to them as if they were generating light onto the spear. With that done, I'm adding the final touch of yellow, which is this bright fluorescent yellow ink. And with this, I'm going to go over the lines we've just done and the halo that we've sprayed on top, and also targeting the tip of the spear, which should hopefully really whack up the brightness of this thing. It's really got a pop. For the last bit of this lightning, I'm gonna go back to the white ink and just finally add a little spray to the tip of the spear and to a couple of different points on each side as if they were generating different lighting to it. For the last bit of airbrushing, it's time to add the shadows in, which will help really bring out the brighter parts and make them look even brighter. So with some carbon black, I'll be spraying it to the base of the weapon and to the bits that would be the opposite sides of the light source. So you can see it will be these little bits that are tucked away on the spear that you can see here. And to finish the spear off and the model as a whole, I'm just going to go back over these lines that I previously did and apply even thinner lines to the middle of them, really trying to bring out the brightness that we lost in the airbrushing. Then it's on to edge highlighting these different parts of the spear that stand out. 
the sides here and the little raised parts in the center as well. This should just help bring them to the forefront a bit more and add that dynamic reflection to them that would be generated as if there was an actual light source emanating from the weapon. Now it is my first time attempting lightning so hopefully it does look convincing enough thus far. And that is the main model done guys. That one felt like an absolute marathon but honestly I'm pretty happy with how he's looking. Look at him. The nameless stud macho man. Macho man. Now my plan was to just end the video here and call it a day and you can see the finished model but I was convinced otherwise to just film myself making the base for this guy so I'll do just that just to wrap things up in a nice bow for him. So with some air drying clay that we used to create the tile base for the massive dancer of the Boreal Valley that I did last month I'm just cutting up little square tiles to fit on this base that I 3D printed and primed with some black a little while ago. So I'm just cutting up different sizes and shapes of tiles so they don't look all flush and symmetrical and just lying them out in rows on this base which I will eventually glue down. Once all nicely arranged on this base I'm just going to grab a load of PVA glue and a crap brush and just start getting the base glued up and then getting all these tiles stuck down all lovely and neat. I also printed these little ruined walls and brick piles a while ago and I thought this would be a good time to utilize them but before sticking them down I'm just going to let the glue around the tiles dry. Once dried I'm applying the Sterling Battlemire technical stuff between the tiles to kind of act as a sealant. I ran out of earth texture and similar things to that so I thought this stuff was close enough as a substitute. I'm basically using this stuff as grout so once all grouted up I'm just going to stick the walls and bricks down in place and grout up the edges of them just to cover the gaps left between them as they were stuck down. Grout your cracks everybody. Grout your cracks. Then it's just a case of tidying up these little overhangs of the tiles on the base and we're going to leave this to dry outside in the sun for a while before spraying with some black primer. Once dried off, this is how the base is looking once primed, now just to paint it. So with a wide dry brush and some Dawnstone dry paint, I'm going to whack on a thin layer of this to the whole base. Keeping it thin and dry means that you still keep some of the dark base coat underneath. Then following that, we'll highlight the edges and uppermost regions and raised areas with some of this long beard grey dry paint. Just repeating the previous step but not painting over the entire thing, but just using it to enhance the grey. Then to build up the grout texture between the tiles a bit more I'm going to add some of the Armageddon dust texture paint which is a little bit more gritty than the muddy technical paint we previously used. Now I can't really recreate cloud, I've seen some people use cotton wool for clouds but I'm not really a massive fan of that. So I decided to add some snow to the space because I haven't used snow before and I was keen to try it. So with a little spray bottle that I have here which has some PVA glue mixed with some water I'm just going to spray it all over the base. Then just sprinkle on some snow powder building it up in different areas keeping some areas clearer. I'm adding more of it to the walls and the bricks because I think snow would settle better there and also building up some little larger areas around the base of the walls and the bricks. Look at that, job done right there. Now last but not least let's stick him on shall we? Luckily enough his little sticky out cloak bit actually rests nicely on this stack of bricks which will give him some added support and now he's stuck down I'm just going to varnish him and in doing this I realized my error and asked myself why did I not varnish him before sticking him down to the base? I've made this 10 times harder for myself and to that question I have one answer I'm fucking stupid but hey at least he's stuck down nice and secure right? Wrong! Ah. Fucked it! Well, since he's been varnished up, we can safely glue him back down and leave him as is. There he is. Done. At last. What an absolute stunner he is. The Giga Chad of Dark Souls. Guys, I can't thank you enough if you've stuck around to the end of this video. It has been a long one because I love this character. I love being able to just sit here and ramble on about him. Hopefully you've enjoyed my ramblings this far as well. As ever, if you enjoyed today's video, please leave a like. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Let me know in the comments if this setup with a new camera angle was better for you as a viewing experience. I'm keen to see if this is the setup that I should go with going forward. But for now, my get good gang, peace out. And don't you dare go hollow.